Listen to the Vibes, hosted by Coyote Knight. Listen in for some positivity and good times. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes broadcast network. Listener discretion is advised. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. I have here, now, don't let me butcher your name, but oh, Alain okay. Azule. Wow, not bad. Not bad uh, for a first attempt. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to see you. Uh, let me not butcher your name. <laughs> Kyle Yates. Yeah, that's close enough. <laughs> hey, the that's, Greek god, Kyle you know, Yates. <laughs> believe it or not, my, when I was married the first time, my, my first wife was Hispanic. And, um, and so to make it easier for her family, my name was Caetano Yates. Oh, Caetano, got this, huh? <laughs> I don't drink, but when I do, I uh, got the Yano Tates, huh? <laughs> okay, so tell us where you were born and raised. Oh, going way back. Uh, we're talking 17th century. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Remember Mr. Peabody and Sherman? Absolutely. It was going the way back machine. Way, way back. No, um, I was born in a, in a little town in uh, North Africa, uh, in Morocco, uh, a city called Casablanca. Uh, many people always think I'm joking when I say that, uh, but uh, that's true. Um, you know, um, came out here when I was uh, eight years old, California. Uh, had a wonderful life, as I understand it, in Morocco. I recommend it to everyone. Um, I'm a big fan of Morocco. I've been back many times since, and um, that's a whole other story in and of itself, uh, where I was invited by the king to uh, return to Morocco and visit. Um, it was a, uh, you know, sort of a fantasy, a dream come true. Um, but mostly uh, was sad because my family didn't, my mom and dad had passed away before I made my return to Morocco and then became sort of the uh, you know, ambassador, uh, acting ambassador, if you will, to promote Morocco for tourism. And um, it's a fun and wonderful and beautiful and safe uh, place to visit. And I recommend it to everyone. So I came out here. Um, and uh, grew up in the, uh, well, I started acting when I was fairly young um, in uh, all the school plays and so forth. Uh, and, you know, thought this was going to be something I'd want to do for the rest of my life, but uh, was short circuited because at the time we couldn't afford, you know, at the time you had to pay for an agent, right? Mm -hmm. To get an agent, uh, you had to pay money. And uh, now, of course, different, but. Uh, we couldn't afford it, so my mom let me down easily, and uh, you know, just rolled with it. Then uh, I took a turn and uh, decided to go into uh, banking as uh, a young man, and uh, that lasted for um, I think about 30, 30 something years. I got into uh, banking and had my own company, mortgage banking. Um, did very well at it, and um, then the market crashed. And fast forwarding to uh, 2007, and uh, essentially uh, was wiped out overnight, as many uh, of your viewers, I'm sure, uh, can relate to. Um, it was a tough time, but that was also the, the turning point and sort of the. Um, um, you know, the fate, as they say, when uh, one door closes, or actually one door uh, shuts, shuts in your face pretty hard, and another one opens. Um, and I got into the acting business uh, when I was uh, almost 50. I'm 97 now, so I've been in it for a long time. <laughs> what? You laugh? Most people say you look good for 97. Not no. bad. <laughs> um, so I got in it at, at 50 and as, as a late bloomer, uh, but it allowed me to jump in with uh, both feet. You know, 
and I mean, I, I ran hard at it and used a lot of the, the disciplines that one um, has learned in running a business much the same way. And, uh, you know, people all told me, you're going to be fine because you're going to do the same thing that you've done all your life. You know, you're going to go after it. Uh, and I didn't understand that, but I did after a while. I, I, you know, got up in the morning, went for the auditions. I was fortunate to be able to secure an agent and uh, begin doing it. And, you know, the thing about auditioning, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a glamorous business, as they say, but when you break it down, there's not much glamour about it, right? You, uh, you get up, and you got to go to your audition, you got to figure out what you're going to wear, and then you got to drive, in my case, uh, 39 miles, one way. <clears throat> Well, gee, why don't you just get closer to L.A.? Well, I'm in Orange <laughs> County, and I like Orange County because it's quiet here. It's peaceful. There's not a lot of that craziness that goes on in L.A. <clears throat> so, excuse me. <clears throat> so I, uh, you know, you drive 39 miles. You spend about a minute and a half, if you're lucky, in your audition. And then uh, you leave, and you return 39 miles back. Of course, in between, you've got to fill up your gas tank, right? Of course. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> You're not getting paid to go audition. And so therein lies the investment of time and commitment and, and uh, stamina. Uh, you know, you've got to have it all to be able to do that repetitively. And if you're lucky, uh, you get auditions and, and, uh, and on occasion you book, book commercial uh, or uh, lock in a role. Uh, and I was fortunate to work with so many young filmmakers early on, early on in my career, meaning at the age of 50, um, <clears throat> which is about 10, 10 years now, 11 years. <clears throat> and to work with <clears throat> kids from USC, UCLA, New York Film Academy, uh, Chapman University, uh, LA Film School, all the majors that are local, uh, and, and to meet so many of these bright, talented, uh, up-and-coming uh, students, basically, right? Student filmmakers right, right, right. that were uh, <laughs> only too excited to try to make their film, their short film, their, their thesis film, I should say. So that, that important one, you know, before you graduate, that's the one. And mm -hmm. uh, I got lucky. Um, as I kept going back and back more and more, I got to... You know, I got to be known as an available actor and they liked some of the things I was doing. And, you know, we shot many films. Uh, I think I've recorded uh, over 60 films uh, in the short film genre. Um, but they were stepping stone, big mm. stepping stone. And of course, you know, those films don't pay. And we all know that you're doing it for the experience and mostly for the relationship too, right? You're building a rapport. Right. And that's what I try to tell you know, young or old actors coming in. And a lot of people hit me up and say, you know, how did you get in? <clears throat> Isn't it hard? Isn't it? And I say, no, it's really not. You make it hard for yourself because you don't have the, the, the depth of it, you know, but if you walk through it, it's not that hard. You know, you pay 19 bucks a month for a site of LA casting and you get all the roles that you can possibly handle and you click buttons now to submit for your, yourself for any particular role. And then you get an email saying, come on in, and then you audition and maybe you get lucky. Uh, and we did that. But, but the thing that was beautiful about it is these, these filmmakers graduated eventually, right? After you know, a number of years, they, they graduated and they became filmmakers. And some of them, like anything else, right? A certain percentage are going to rise to the top. And a few of the ones that I fortunately got in with uh, did. And uh, one we formed a partnership, I formed a partnership with a wonderful, wonderful director, talented director, uh, Academy Award winner now, uh, Harry Locke IV. And uh, for editing, I should say, uh, he was a colorist uh, and is a colorist, uh, but a good one, right? And one that the, the, the universities are very interesting. You know, the, when they spot the talent, they use it, right? Oh, if you're course. good at that, we're going to use you to teach a class within our university. And they, and they spotted Harry that way, and that's what they did. 
and that gave him greater uh, you know exposure to many other talent talented filmmakers. Uh, so um, that's been a part of that you know the, the growth in my life in the industry, um, and I've I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, at one point uh, I was uh, representing seven films at the Cannes Film Festival in 2013. Oh, wow. Now, you're like, what? Well, yeah, I was in seven films at the same time when all, f all those films were submitted to the short film corner in the Cannes Film Festival and one which was making its world premiere called Speed Dragon, directed by a talented filmmaker named Dan Frank uh, that starred in and co-starred myself and Bai Ling, a uh, wonderful Chinese actress that you might have uh, heard of. And, you know, the experience of Cannes was un un unparalleled. I, there's nothing I can think of in the industry that matches that. The grandeur of walking the red carpet, uh, photographers, uh, wonderful films, and, uh, and being the one to represent those films. As an actor, not as a producer or director, I can't take any of that credit. But as an actor, um, that's that. That was a highlight. Uh, since then, it's all been downhill. No. Now, let me let me let me back up here from my wheelchair. Uh, <laughs> hey, don't uh, joke. I'm actually. Oh no, no, I, I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm teasing, of course. But listen, when you've done when you've done 25, 30 years of improv comedy, and I have. Uh, anything goes and I have believe me I put my foot in my mouth more than once uh, but that's what happens you know you've got nothing to work with and it's go just like us we're not rehearsed right here right whatever says said no, uh, it's, up to you. Mean, it's up to you to edit not me it's up to you <laughs> and hopefully everybody brings something fresh and new to the uh, equation um, but so yeah the that I think dovetails to in part uh, the film uh, the evil down the street, uh, and maybe I hope not jumping ahead too far uh, for you, but it it's a it was a film project that I uh, got on on board with uh, not what a year and a half two years ago, and uh, how that came about was uh, Harry Locke uh, the fourth who uh, is my partner and uh, has done feature films uh, pro produced and directed and written very talented and he and I um, were meeting at the studio uh, different by design in Culver City where he works and um, we were uh, introduced there me and Craig Ahrens uh, of course the writer and uh, producer of the Evil Down the Street we didn't know each other and we just stepped into the room and started chatting and one thing led to another and then I learned he was the mortgage banker and Wow, ping, chow, all this, <laughs> all the fireworks went off, right? Uh, sounded like Joe Pesci in Goodfellas, right? When, uh, when he's describing that scene where, you know, he's he's getting uh, beat up and uh, he, he wakes up and, you know, says some expletives to the guy that's interviewing him and says, you know, I'm not going to repeat it now, but, you know, he says something and then the guy punches him and he says, pow, ping, pow. Uh, that's that's the uh, expression of the fireworks, um, and Craig and I hit it off immediately. I mean, he, he's a he's a man's man. Okay, that's a man's man. Uh, what a wonderful soul, and what a sincere gentleman, and a guy that you can trust uh, from here to the moon. I mean. You gave the guy uh, a dollar and asked him to go get something, he'd get it and he'd bring it back the exact change. Okay, that's the kind of guy that uh, he is. Uh, very, uh, very wholesome. I can't say enough about him. And he had a part in helping me with my film, uh, which was uh, The Redeemer, uh, where he brought a lot of his knowledge from mortgage banking to the uh, uh, industry, the film industry. That's what makes him so, uh, I don't know, for me, uh, I really admire his, his talent, his ability to 
just go straight down that line. And you know, when you're making a film, it's, for me anyway, it's like this. How do you keep it all together, right? How? I mean, you look at these IMDb credits sometimes, not that this is the case with, with Craig, but you know, the mind gets boggled. Thousand cast actors, right? Thousand people in the cast. Ow, as a producer. That's always uh, intrigued me. And that's part of the reason why I'm trying my hand at it now, but it's not easy. Um, well, you know, it's amazing, number one, because it seems the universe brings certain people into your life. And, you know, you could have came from two different worlds, but if it was meant to be, somehow y'all end up, you know, talking and, and getting to know each other. I mean, here you had similar backgrounds as far as, you know, banking and that kind of thing goes. And, you know, the, of course, the love of films. And, you know, I, I want to phrase this the right way, but when you get independent filmmakers, whether the movie's good or not, um, you can still tell people put their hearts into these projects as to where there's so many Hollywood movies that you see, you know, big budget films that they were in it just to either, they, they had obligation to get the story out there. Uh, here we got some new technology. We can put all these cool special effects, but the story is lacking. Right. You know, how, how we well see said. that time and well time said. again. Craig, Craig, uh, you know, I resented Craig from the moment I met him. Um, <laughs> I don't mind saying that. Um, jerk. Say, well, why, Alan? Why? Well, you know, he was one of the lucky ones. I mean, he was one of the smart ones. He got out of the mortgage business the, like the week when the market crashed and everybody got annihilated. He came out unscathed. And uh, that's how we started the conversation. You know, I said, well, how did you do? He said, oh, I came out okay. I'm like, well, he asked me, how did I do? I go, I was devastated. Okay. I, I lost everything when that market crashed. And then it was the rebuild and all that. But so I, I tease him about that. It's, you know, it's, um, it's part of, of who he is and, and, and his abilities uh, or to, to sense things, you know, but he's a straight shooter and uh, I can't, I can't say enough about him. And for him to have taken the film, the evil down the street, and, uh, and of course, him and David Espinosa, but to have raised that, uh, that, that I would call it laughable budget. And I don't mind saying that. Uh, laughable budget to make that film was extraordinary. Uh, good or bad, or however you feel about the film, it's your, it's your, your call. But to have achieved that is something. Um, and so I've stayed fairly close with Craig, you know, because I, 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 I want to collaborate with him as we go down the road. And he's already got two more projects going on. You know, it's going to be wonderful. And him and, him and Espinosa are just a, a dynamic duo, you know, yeah. as they say. When you find that right, that right combo, it's, it's golden. You want to embrace it, never right. let go. That's why I the, see it. By the way, it's not David Espinosa anymore. It's Father Bob. I'm sorry. Father Bob. Father Bob. Yes. Oh, Father Bob. You know, I was also resentful because if you really stop to think about it, I would have made a much better Father Bob. I think so. Yeah. But oh, you yes. need, did, did you need the soul patch and the long hair? I had too? the soul patch. I, I shaved it for you this morning. I had it. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> I told David the first time I got to actually meet him, I was like, I, I didn't recognize you without that little soul patch going on, you know. Father Bob was a wonderful character, um, and, you know, he, he played it to the T. I mean, uh, it was a natural for him, for David. Of course, he's got the background in acting and writing, now directing with, uh, with Craig. Uh, you know, so much crap gets pushed to the side and focus begins on the project when the combo is right, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have that infighting and all the drama and all that stuff. I mean, yeah, I'm sure, you know, they just dis disagree on points, but when they disagree, they, 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 they realize it. They, they, they disagree and that's it. They move on. You know, if we could all do the same, 
you know, we'd achieve peace in this world a lot faster. Just that's the key, you know, when you find a partner. And I think much the same with me and Harry, I think we found that combination. And, you know, the difference is age. Uh, I out-age I out Harry by 25, 30 years. Um, whereas David and, and Craig are, you know, much in the same realm. No. I think Craig is 105 and David is 106. I so think, they're, yeah, they're, some give or take a few. They're they're old souls. They're really old <laughs> souls. They're and, they're dirt souls. Well, and if but, I have uh, to, if I can add one more thing, Elena Gerard was absolutely awesome in that movie. You know, she didn't have a lot of acting experience before the film, and that was me. remarkable. That was remarkable for her to take on that lead. And, and run with it. Um, I saw her getting in character. I watched a lot of that project as much as I could, even though I had a smaller role, you know, uh, as, as Don Archer, the neighbor, but she, she handled it masterfully. I mean, we all got along well on the set. Uh, Kyle, uh, uh, Kelton rather, was uh, just a wonderful, uh, you know, disciplined actor, you could tell from the moment you got there. Everybody took their roles quite seriously, you know. Budget aside, they're there to deliver on a, on a project, you know. And I was really, uh, I was fortunate. Uh, you know, Craig just, he got me into the film just be, because he met me and I didn't really have to audition. You know, he liked what whatever he liked and saw the relationship in, in, the, in the character I played, which is basically a a drunken, uh, dry drunk neighbor uh, that uh, suffered from a little bit of paranoia, you might say, and, uh, you know, had a, a really solid scene in the film um, that I enjoyed. Anyway, yeah, she, she and I, she and I, uh, uh, Gerard, we connected because of the French, uh, Gerard. Gerard. Gérard Depardieu, <laughs> but uh, yeah, she and I connected on the film uh, in the scene where she um, she basically uh, comes into the house as we're discussing the weirdness going on, uh, and she approaches. She basically catches me and uh, the people in the room off guard, uh, and approaches me in a way to sort of, you know, tantalize me, tease me with her physical presence. And she's a beautiful woman, uh, but she's also a little taken by the spirit. And um, I don't want to give away too much, but, but she's, uh, she and I have a very interesting confrontation uh, that is literally nose to nose, and uh, it's a fun scene, you know. The, the, the tension, the tension's there. Uh, uh, so yeah, it, it, it was a it was a great project. Um, but Craig has gone a whole new cast for the next project, as I see, uh, and 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 I think he just likes the he wants to change it up, you know, and uh, that's okay. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't resent him for that. He got paid on a budget that was extremely low. We got paid, and that's another big deal for an actor, any actor. Uh, you know, there are features that we'll do where pay is not not existent, really. Uh, certainly for shorts, but occasionally for features, um, especially in the low bu budget side. Well, how can you do it, right? Every nickel has to go to something. The film. The film did it all without CGI, you know. It, it's, a, it's a great story, and it's a great achievement to, to be able to tell the story and make it happen without all the frill. Um, we're all used to, you know, we're all used to 50, 100 million plus budgets. It's, uh, it's a different type of film, you know. It's, uh, I think it's more of an old school film, you know. We want to really get the old school feel uh, with texture style this is it and um, you're not going to get all the wow crazy stuff you know but it's going to draw you in you know that's the key and for him to be able to pull it off is uh, 
you know, it's testament. Uh, can you imagine what he could do with double the budget, double of a low budget? Exactly. Well, you know, Only there's there's certain movies and stories that you really don't need all that big budget, you know, special no, effects. No, right. You don't. You don't. And it's and it's a it's based on on real events, and that's what you have to stick to. If you can just realize coming into this this film that these are based on real life events and if you devi deviate too much then yeah you're going to get what you get in a lot of these other blockbusters or not necessarily blockbusters but you're going to get a film that's nothing to do with what really is the story and uh you know it's it's your call what do you like you know um i enjoyed it i enjoyed watching it uh, i fast forwarded through my part but you know <laughs> we never like to see ourselves or hear ourselves. I, I also enjoyed working with Deborah Romaglia. She's uh, one that I've worked with before, and we had a you know nice relationship. Um, but we were surprised when we were both cast in the same film. You know, sometimes you just don't know until you get there um, who's who, and uh, so that was a real nice surprise. And uh, she did a great job uh, being the, uh, I would say the. Uh, the catalyst for the drama in the film, um, you know, the rumor monger, uh, <laughs> good. And of course, Craig, you know, who's constantly trying to shut her up. I mean, it's just a beautiful, he, he that was his wife. Uh, right, right. That just, was my favorite it's, part of the movie. It's, it's just golden. It's golden to watch him <laughs> do that. It's almost like real life. Yeah. She was like another Mrs. Kravitz. He, he had, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he almost he had he did that too well the way he tried to shut her down <laughs> too well um i didn't want to probe about his own personal life but uh, it seemed to be natural for craig <laughs> it's just a, a really wonderful experience again i um i didn't have a big role i would call it more of a cameo um but it certainly uh brought us all a lot closer and uh, I said, he, he's, he's always there. I mean, you know, you can call him right now and he'll pick up the phone and chat with you about anything. Uh, he's, non -judge he's not judgmental, you know, and I've come to him basically saying, hey, I, I'm lost. Yeah, I'm lost in what to do next. And uh, he'll jump right in there with you. That's why I say he's a man's man, you know. Uh, not too many people like that. Most of the time, people want something in return, um, not a Zippo, zero, with Craig. Now, you have, um, you have your own little endeavors going on, like your, uh, what is it, the Azule Film Fund? Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah AFF. Um, thanks for bringing that up. Um, Azule Film Fund is uh, something I started just... Uh, about uh, two years, two years, three years ago. And uh, it was born out of a connection with the Chinese. Uh, I had been invited to a festival um, and I ended up meeting a few individuals that were uh, involved in media and that sort of thing. And of course, I don't speak Chinese, um, but um, there are apps that you can use like WeChat, which is the connection to China, by the way. WeChat. Uh, this is an app that is very advanced, by the way. You can put in all the words you want to transmit to someone, and uh, they hit a button, and it translates it all for them, for you. Literally, pages translated at the click of a button. Now, it's not 100%, but it's 98.5. You know what I mean? So you get the gist of the message, and it's a wonderful tool. And so, little by little, as I got to these uh, festivals, I got to know a few people and one of them led me to a Chinese investor uh, that I spoke with in uh, on a phone call. Uh, it wasn't Zoom, it was through WeChat. WeChat has like a Zoom feature in it, like FaceTime, you know, but it's within the app. And um, we were able to secure funds for my first short, which is uh, the Redeemer, uh, on a phone call. Um, that's not gonna happen that's not going to happen a lot, right? No, it would have never happened 20, 30 years ago. No, and, and we were lucky. A very prominent doctor in China and Japan. 
made it happen for us. And uh, then off we were making our first short uh, in the cold of Northern California on a ranch. The film is uh, The Redeemer. And it was uh, written and directed by my partner, Harry Locke IV, and produced and co-produced by myself and Fama Locke, beautiful wife and uh, good friends. Um, I executive produced it with uh, obviously my Chinese connection through Ashley Film Fund. And uh, we are uh, making our festival run with it. Uh, we've been in multiple festivals, Chicago International Film Festival. Uh, we've done the uh, Chinese American TV and film festival out of New York, where we won best uh, short film. Uh, that was a great experience, by the way. If you ever went to the Oscars, this was like the Oscars, okay? I mean, come really? on. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, you got the backdrop going with full graphics, everything, you know, just, just music and everything. And then the voice comes in, you know, from outside, like, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you know, uh, a winner. You know, and uh, wow, you walk up to the stage and there's, you know, five, six hundred people in the audience, all coming from different parts of the world, mostly from uh, China, uh, tuxedos and red carpet, just like you would imagine. But I didn't I didn't expect that. Anyway, we got recognized. I choked when I was uh, taking uh, the moment moment for the speech. I choked. I, mean, I know I choked. Uh, then, if you know, it's just like anything else. After the fact, you go. Ah, that's what I should have done this. I should have said that. <laughs> you know, I ended up calling, all the time. I ended up calling some of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, crew, different parts, different roles, their names. <laughs> it was like calling the director, the lead actor. <laughs> uh, but that's what happens to you sometimes, right? You can't take that back. But a beautiful experience, uh, coverage all over the, the world, uh, media outlets from everywhere. You know, so that that was cool. Um, and we're now heading to the Tucson Film Festival. We did the Downtown LA Film Festival and we uh, are nominated at the Tucson, it's called the Wild Bunch Film Festival, Tucson. And we're nominated for four nominations, Best Actor, Best Actress, Best uh, Director, and Best Drama. Um, I got a tiny role in there as well, which, uh, School. Okay, you have to tell me something about the film now. You got me about really what? About the Redeemer? Yes. Uh, what do you want to know? <laughs> give, give me at least a little bit of it. The budget? <laughs> no, the story, the story. You got to well, give me some a, of it. Yeah, it's, um, I, you know what? I, I never, I, I always like to get it right, if I may. Sure. Uh, and not just. Uh, try to uh, bluff it, as they say. Um, Redeemer, a newly minted deputy and a vengeful widow seek justice against the malevolent outlaw that left them for dead in this dark reimagination of the Lone Ranger mythos. Okay. okay. Pretty good, no? If you're telling me it's a Western, I'm definitely there. That's a Western, um, you know, his, his father, his father basically uh, abandoned him and uh, left him for dead or, and he is raised by his, um, you know, adopted father. And that is the marshal, uh, which is the part I play. So he is my son, essentially. And I uh, minted, I'm, I'm the sheriff, the marshal rather, and he's been deputized. And his, his goal is to go after his father and bring him to justice for all the punishment he's created, all the sins. And uh, his half-sister wants him completely eradicated, out of the bloodline, dead. And she's uh, on a mission to find him and to do just that. So it's got a lot of layers in it uh, that are really wonderful. Um, Harry wrote the script um, and, um, you know, we've 
elaborated now on seeking funds for the feature. And we're going back to the trough, back to our Chinese connection uh, with a full script in hand and a far different film. This is sort of a concept, right? Uh, it's a calling card. It gives you the full breadth of the director's style and ability. We won cinematography award um, with um, um, our wonderful Matthew Matthew Halla, Hallis, um, who is just fantastic cinematographer, and a lot of guys put in a lot of time, as as it has always said, beyond the budget, well beyond the budget. The quality of the film is really solid. So maybe if that'll be another. Maybe that'll be another interview, huh? You know what? I'm thinking we should do a reaction video to that. How you do a reaction video? You show so it? We'll take different parts of it, like a diff whatever pivotal scenes that you'd like to, to show, and we could you could see my natural reaction to it. I'd love to do that. I didn't expect to go this far. I thought we would be uh, more focused on uh, Craig's project, uh, but uh, I guess... Uh, I guess, uh, you know, we can do that. That's your... That sounds like it would be a, a fun call. thing to do. So if I wanted to, to watch the movie, where would I find it? I'd send you the link. Okay, because... Well, I'd send if, you the link. If we, if we do that, then I don't want to see any of it yet. I want to I want to do that, like, sight unseen, natural reaction to it. You want to you wanna see the... The clips, or are you um, first? No, if we're going to do a reaction to it, I want to be able to, to see the clips you show me for the first time and get a natural reaction to it. Okay, so you're not going to see the film. You're just going to no, get parts. I'm, I'm going to wait, oh. and, and if we do a reaction video, I want it to be well, what about all just like, Well, wouldn't that be just like watching the trailer, or? You know, it depends. I mean, if there's like certain parts of the movie that you'd say, hmm, I oh, bet absolutely. you he might, he might get a, a, a let, let me see what he thinks about this part, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm sure I could bring uh, Harry. I would love to do that. Um, and uh, he could line it up for, for, for uh, reaction shots. Uh, that'd, be, that'd be cool. That'd be really cool. I want to do that. Uh, you know, I see people do that kind of stuff all the time where they'll watch a certain, you know, uh, video or, you know, a, a trailer or something, yeah, 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 yeah. and they yeah. get the, the, you get their first reaction to it. And I'm, oh, I'm kind of curious as how that would work. I want to do it. He's got a Harry's got a friend named Walter Banishak who is out of Chicago who does just that, but for um, the um, you know superhero films, and he's he's a very talented. Has quite a fan base, as I understand. Um, but that's what he does. Uh, he's back with great reaction reviews for a lot of the uh, comic comic films as well um, so yeah but um, so as Agile Film Fund just you know is is budding just beginning to grow um, we don't have the you know the depth of, of resume uh, for producing but we're you know just now getting back on our feet after this COVID slowly uh, and uh, we're going to be heading to China and uh, sitting down with investors and making the pitch. That's what's supposed to be the way it's supposed to be. Um, I think we'll be fine. We'll be safe. The plan trip is planned in January. Uh, it's part of a uh, an adjunct to being a, a selected as um, the executive director for the USA or executive director for, for America for the World Madam Global uh, Beauty Competition. It's a, uh, an event that's gonna be held in Shanghai, but is making its run all around the world. And I was fortunate to uh, book that uh, position. And I've done a lot with the Chinese, mind you. I've done multiple festivals. I've sang on stage uh, for live audiences. I do a pretty mean Elvis uh, to uh, its, it's, it's now or never. Uh, it's and now or never. I do a mean <laughs> one, let me tell you. So um, they've come to know me as sort of the, uh, you know, 
one off. Uh, they, 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 you know, I'm one of the few Americans that's involved and uh, I enjoy it. I mean, they're beautiful people and um, very gracious. Uh, the country I've been to before, China, is uh, it's beautiful. I mean, you know, notwithstanding what we all know is going on, but um, yeah, so. About, well, we have a bit in common because I get paid not to sing. <laughs> that's good, that's good. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure that some of the people wouldn't feel that way when they heard me. <laughs> they might say, we'll pay you, but don't sing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, it's, uh, it's an interesting life um, and direction. Well, you have an awesome voice, and I, I know you do voiceovers, so you have to tell me what you do voiceovers for. Well, for Netflix, for uh, Sony, different, you know, Whoever wants me, I'd love to do more of it. Uh, as you know, the beauty of it is you can do it in your pajamas at home. But I go in the studios and, and, and do it there. I like to do character voices. Um, as I mentioned, uh, not, um, not cartoon characters, you know. But I can turn on a different voices, uh, different texture, tone. Just finished one um, where I narrated. Narration is, you know, very generic for the most part. It still needs to bring a certain amount of gravitas to the to the, the script. And um, I did that for a young filmmaker that is up and coming. It's another story. Now I didn't meet him at USC. I met him at the uh, the uh, Multicultural International Film Festival in uh, Palos Verdes here in California. And he was only uh, 11, 11 years old, Kyle. 11? Yep. And he had a documentary and we met, shook hands. I was a judge and a host of the event. Um, it was it was a, a cool meeting, right? I mean, his father was there, uh, Mr. Schumar. And um, I hope I pronounced that right. His name is Tanme Sravistava. I hope I said that right. And Tanme uh, is just this wonderful up and coming filmmaker who now, fast forward six years later, 17, and he has amassed 11 short films and two, 11 documentaries and two short films and 15 international awards. Okay, wow. that's, that's, quite a, that's quite a library at 17. Right. So uh, we keep in touch on Facebook, you know, and he sends me things that he's done. And finally, I saw one that just came across uh, literally last week called 90 Days to Leave. And um, it's about the Asian, Asian population that was living, actually moved from Britain, uh, taken over by ships and taken to Uganda to build their uh, railway system. And uh, this is in the 1960s, 70s, early 70s, when uh, Idi Amin, uh, who was the general at the time, corrupt to no end. Um, in 1971, he announces that uh, all Asians in Uganda get out. Now, actually 90 days. That was, that's why it's called 90 days to leave. And if you don't leave in 90 days, you're going to be shot. I mean, it's, it's a horrific environment, horrific uh, circumstance that um, you don't wish on anyone. But anyway, it's, it's 100,000 people suddenly asked to, to get out and nobody's going to have them. India won't take them. They were East Indians uh, from Britain originally um, coming over to do the work. They built the country up. They built it so much that they essentially... Um, were successful in every sector, lawyers, doctors, accountants, businesses that flourished and thrived, became very wealthy. And then apparently the country or the government felt they were a threat. That's, that's what propelled this, this announcement to evict them. Uh, but India doesn't want them and Britain doesn't want them. And now they're like, where do we go? And it's a very powerful documentary. It's not long, it's 15 minutes. 
Um, love to bring Tanme on to do a little bit of his own take on what, what inspired him to do that project. And so I said, I, I listened to it and, you know, it had his voice on the, on the uh, uh, narration. And I said, gosh, I'd love to do it on, on with my version. I call it the American version of that film. Because, you know, Tan May has a, uh, is from India and has a, clearly an Indian dialect. Um, and so he agreed. He said, you know, let's try it. And within a week, I mean it, from now, from a week ago to now, I just got the poster, which he just converted and reflects all the credits. Beautiful poster. He, uh, he loved the, the voiceover I did. And um, I did it. I cut it with, with Harry Locke, who ended up engineering the voiceover at the studio. And uh, we now have another version. He did a great job. I mean, his voice is wonderful. I just wanted to do it for my own satisfaction. That's how that started. Um, call it selfish, whatever. But he agreed. And we now now have a, a second version that is going to go to the Oscars. Uh, to qual it's it's going to hopefully qualify. But it's going there for consideration. Um, I mean, this kid is destined. All right? It's this one of those situations where you go, you can't go, can't go wrong. 17, 13 films. Come on. It's crazy. Craziness, huh? That is crazy. So I admire him. And his father, of course, has been very supportive all along the way. Um, so that's what, what I'm talking about, inspiration. He inspired me. And now he writes me saying, I've inspired him. That's what this is all about. You know, forget budgets, forget fancy schmancies. It's just about that. If you can inspire someone, great things can happen. That's right. And, and I know that was just a, a one-line text. Hi, Tanmay. Love the short. I'd love to try and put my voice to it. What do you think? Well, nothing fancy. There wasn't any contracts flying back and forth. Oh, who are you? And what are you doing to my film? And all this, you know, like, oh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, people can take possession of their film so much so they choke the life out of it, potential life that it could have. You know, I'm, I'm only here to facilitate. Okay, and I'd love to be creative. I have my chances for that if I can get them. But I'm really a facilitator. Everybody sees the gray hair and they think money. Oh, it's a producer. He must have money. Look at his hair. It's gray. Uh, you know, it's quite the opposite. You know, I don't have the financial worth. I have connections. Okay, oh, yeah. I'll admit That's I have some connections. Nice. But I'll tell you, those connections will do what they want. It isn't going to be me telling them what to do. It's not that kind of relationship. You know, and the Chinese think for themselves, like anybody, you know, is this going to work? I mean, Chinese funding a Western film? Since when? Why? Well, because it has a potential. And, and, and you as the investor might have that feeling that you want to help some young filmmaker go to the next level. And hopefully it's not going to put you out much. You know, we don't take people's money that's their last money or even close to their last. This is money you can play with. Money you can afford to lose because we all know that the percentages of film success it's less than one fraction of one fraction of one percent. Okay, did I did I did I drop that down low enough? <laughs> did I give you the sense that you shouldn't be in the industry at all? Uh. <laughs> well, you know the the thing is when it comes to to people and inspiration, you, you should invest in people and not so much, you know, the, the money aspect of it. Yeah, of course, people do these things because they want to make money. But um, I have a friend of mine that his success, um, and it's weird, but he, he gave a lot of his talent away. He's an architect. Yeah. Um, he got on a specific website that uh, you know hey if you're looking for plans for your home or business or whatever you let me know i'll do it for you for nothing I'm like dude your talent you're just giving it away it ended up leading to a here it a, comes a multi-million dollar <laughs> here it comes i know, love that story deal. kyle and Woo. 
And so if I can help other people out, well, then I've, I not only have I made a friend, I've, I've yeah, gotten yeah. a little bit of yeah. experience, you know, with whatever it is that I'm doing for them and word of mouth gets around for, you know, what people are actually asking for you. And so it comes back, it comes back a hundredfold. Yes. That's all you got to know. If you just do something back a hundredfold, don't do it with the expectation. Just do it, you know, do it, do it naturally. It, it has happened to me so many times. I mean. You know, my, my largest reward that I ever got in my life was I, I used to be a children's pastor. A children's pastor. Pastor. Oh, wow. Yes. And, you know, I, I spent my Saturdays going out and visiting kids and telling them, hey, you know, we got the church bus comes by on Sunday mornings, jump on, you know, go to children's church sing songs and you know i'd spend my evenings on saturdays preparing for sunday's lesson and whatnot and i won't get into details but i had a little bit of falling out with the church and got away from it and yeah, wow. discouraged and that kind of thing and one day one of those kids from uh from that bus I didn't remember recognize you. He remembered me. I, I didn't remember him because he, you know, he, yeah. he was probably about eight at the time yeah. that I, I taught him. And there he was 20 something years old. And he's like, you know, you came to my house and wow. you invited me on the bus. And, you know, you, you, you gave us candies when we answered questions right. And, you know, we sang all these songs and you taught us so many valuable lessons. And this is how it impacted my life. And wow. That, that's beautiful. That that's means beautiful. more to me than any kind of money would have. You know what I mean? So, did you hand him the bill? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so it, that's what I'm saying. Let's see now, uh, those, I remember you. Yeah, you, you ate all the candy. <laughs> that was two dollars. That's a beautiful. Uh, that's, a beautiful that's a beautiful story uh, of how it comes back around when you least expect it. I was, you know. Being Jewish, as I mentioned earlier in our free interview, um, I was um, young when I came to the U.S. And part of the part of the achieving manhood is going through a certain education uh, ritual with uh, the temple and having your bar mitzvah, which is when you turn 13 and claim adulthood. And I sang for a congregation of. 500. I was destined to be a cantor, right? That was really my calling when I was 11, 12, 13. But like you, I had a falling out too, <laughs> okay? Um, I didn't fall out for any major reason other than I met girls, money, and cars. And that made me go a different direction. Um, but from that, early beginning people I met along the way in life remembered that I was a young man singing at the temple and I had the voice for it you know I had the voice for the Hebrew song and um, so it has impacted you know because I apparently must have in inspired at that time you know it's a very religious kind of a thing right very spiritual thing you're you're inside a temple and you're going through the motions and a lot of times people have passed away and so you're singing prayers for those who have passed which we call uh, the Kaddish and uh, it's a very beautiful uh, healing song and uh, some of them never forgot so we do things we don't know how they're going to come around that's that's uh you never that's know. cool that's the cool thing you never know and say that's more of a success to me is when you've impacted somebody's life and it does not necessarily a monetary gain it's just they somebody appreciated what you did for them i will uh i will uh probably leave you here shortly no problem as uh sylvia's birthday is today and i promised her we'd get out and um Enjoy her birthday. Uh, Your fiance. Oui, Mr.
Don't tell Hill that. <laughs> <laughs> I threatened her with my fiancé, but, uh, you know, this would be my first rodeo at 61 years of age. Um, just a real picky guy. That's what it is. Uh, just so picky. Um, to a fault. No, I always tell people, you know, the reason I didn't get married, a lot of people think, you know, well, it must be gay. You know, that's the first thing that comes out. And I say, you know, no, no. The reason I'm not married is because I've never met anyone that my mother approved of. And that's the way I leave it, you know, for you to figure that out. Um, but no, Sylvia's uh, wonderful. And um, she's it, you know, she's the one. And, and, and it's not her first rodeo. So it's not a question of it's got to happen now, you know. Uh, but the family, the kids, everybody, it just, it's just good. But I will leave you with one thing that, first of all, thank you immensely for this wonderful time we've shared to be able to talk about Craig's film, uh, Evil Down the Street, and everything that went on. And as little as I had to do with it, it was just a wonderful experience. Um, but also all the other things we touched upon. But I will say this for, for, for your viewers, if they're watching, um, you know, they say the best for last, right? Um, I, I think if any actors out there are looking for, or any inspired people that want to get into the acting business, I'll say that because I think there's a lot more inspired actors or, or actor want to be, uh, than, than there are actors. And by that, I mean, you can be 50, you can be 60, you can be 70, you can be 80 and get into the acting world. It's, it's the beautiful thing about it. There's no age limit. I go to auditions all the time and I'm surrounded by, you know, 85, 90 year olds that are waiting to go up for their moment. It's beautiful. I could write a, a series on that, you know, if I, if I could sit down and discipline myself enough. That would be just heartwarming and laughing your butt off, I mean, can you imagine, right? I mean, a, a dating game for the elderly. Just a thought. Hey, uh, you one of my favorite commercials from the 80s was, where's the beef? <laughs> That's right. You remember those old, oh, old yeah, 80s? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, reminds me of a Doritos commercial I did. Um, but anyway, um, it can happen. You just need to reach out and ask someone. And you're welcome to have your viewers call me directly or text me <clears throat> and I can help them find, you know, an agent. Not difficult. Uh, one agency I work with and have for many years allows me to <clears throat> suggest or recommend actors. So if that is something that they're interested in, but one thing is important, as you know, they have to have the discipline or, be, or have the, the ability to, to, to create that schedule of commitment. You have to be available. Right. It's not enough to say you're an actor and you've got a card with Screen Actors Guild. You've got to be available. Otherwise, your agent drops you. It's really that simple. Why would they want to give you a chance when you're not available? Somebody, there's a hundred right. more people, like they say, you know, that, that, exactly. that are waiting in line. So if you're serious about acting and you really want a help, a real big help, getting to an agent, uh, you can you can call me or text me. There's no cost, there's no charge, there's no fee, there's nothing. It is strictly gratuitous and, 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 and it's a way of giving back. And as we discussed earlier, it comes back a hundredfold because you help somebody. That's right. It Just does. does. I'm glad well, you people, said that because, oh, yeah. you know, I've tried to stress to people here I am, I'm, I'm turning 50 in just a couple of weeks. And it took me um, basically losing my health and getting older before I realized there was something else out there that I enjoyed doing. And so it doesn't, you don't let those things affect what you want to do in this life. You know, my, Try my, my spine is deteriorating, so I don't, oh, sorry, I can't, dude. I can't, well, don't feel sorry for me, whatever. I don't feel sorry for you. Because this I is. Don't. I, I don't feel sorry. I, I, I know you to be 
able to combat yeah. it's in your, your swagger, the way you, you, you maintain yourself. I can tell you bypassed those blocks already. That's right. You don't, don't, don't even let that stop you. You know, if there's something in this world you want to do, then, then do it. You know, um, hey, you're, you're looking at it, you know, health wise, I, you know, I'm thankful that I'm okay. And I, I got my share of diabetes that's creeping in. And, we're, we're in the club. The poke hey. your finger club. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> popping that pill. Pop that pill. Um, but uh, I, I was going to say my my health is okay, but and I've lost my train of thought. You know, it the might training. be that it might be that metformin dementia side effect you were talking you. about earlier. I told you. What's your name again? <laughs> Come on now, give me a letter. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here, come here, Ziggy, Ziggy. Okay, That's fine. funny. My my cat's been trying to get in my lap. That's a shoo shoo, finicky guy. Um, yeah, no, you just gotta. I guess what I was gonna say is, you know, I lost everything. I mean, I say I lost everything, right? Uh, the physical things. Uh, when the market crashed, I mean, you want to talk about a broken, broken man? You know, having to start all over again mm -hmm. well that, that has a certain amount of uh effect and you got to be able to move past it all and, and now to be able to say you know we've accomplished a lot of things since that crash um you know it's it's uh it's it's reassuring and you know you're going the right way but we all have challenges in different forms um but don't let don't let anything stop you. It sounds cliche, right? Never give up, etc. But it's it's as silly as it sounds. It's it's true. It just has a real foundation for that, you know. You got to have a determination. Yeah, you really do. You have to have that desire. You don't and you don't give up. You don't. You could have easily given up, but you said, you know what? I'm determined to get back to where I was, and look. Lo and behold, you may not get back to where you were, right? But you're going to get somewhere that you didn't think you could get to. Uh, sorry, I misphrased and, and, that. And that's no, <laughs> it's, and that's and that's a beautiful thing. And as I as I look back on the last 10, 12 years, I think I would never have done this sitting behind a desk. Not that you're sitting behind a desk is bad, but you know what I mean. I was in the banking world. The box and yeah. CEO and all that good, good stuff, but limit to no end. And I think about the people out there that are just going like this. That's a circle, by the way. I don't know if it comes across that way. In the yeah, there. It is. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> orbiting. Um, so yeah, you know, that's that's about the best I can leave with someone. Of course, you know, uh, I, I, I hesitate to say if you have a project and you want to discuss it because I, I don't want to mislead people, you know. Um, yeah. Projects like Tan Maze, as I mentioned, the documentary, uh, come around uh, just by, by luck. I mean, fate. I don't know how else to describe it. But it literally, in a week, went from one extreme to another. I didn't expect any credit, didn't expect anything. I just was giving my voice. I didn't say, I want to give my voice, and I would like to be the blah, blah, and this. No, I just want to lend my voice. It's like the architect, right? I just want to do it. And now, posters and marketing campaign, and a run for, uh, for, for the Oscars to qualify, hopefully. Uh, yeah, we're going to bring... Harry, and we're going to bring Ten May back to you, my friend. Hey, I'm all for it. Don't go away. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lain, right? Monsieur, Monsieur Kyle. Yes, Coyote. C'était un, un très un plaisir uh, extra pour moi. Uh, J'adore votre style. Uh, which is style, not stealing, style in French. Et uh, je voudrais re retourner pour discuter beaucoup de choses avec vous. Vous avez un, un caractère, c'est magnifique. 
French fries to you too. Ah, you figured it out. <laughs> oh, I said thank you, Kyle, for a wonderful interview, and uh, I can I, I enjoyed your style and uh, love your character. Um, we will see each other and discuss many more things. Well, I look forward to it. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network and on Instagram at The Vibes Broadcast. <laughs>